Pilots Pro, show number 32. I say it again, I say it all the time at the beginning of every show. This is the show where we take you from being the home PC tech to networking, and we kind of broad your horizon so you can make more money, and uh, pretty much it's about uh, making more money. All right, man? That's right. How you doing, making man? more money. I'm doing pretty good. It's been a busy week getting back into working. Uh, okay. It's nice, though. I missed it when I was off for a little while, but it's good, good to be back at work with all the trials and tribulations <laughs> of dealing with these users, which I love, which I love. Yeah, man. Um, I like How taking... you doing? Good, man, good. I, I feel a lot better. I had went back to a full a work week with no medication, so life is good. Um, life is good, so... Yeah, I... You know, when you take time off because you, you're you sick, it's not really enjoyable because it's not like you can go out to the beach and hang out, you know? So. Right, and then I feel guilty when I want to take off because I'm like, well, I just missed a week for that. Yeah. And it's like, I'm t I, you know, I had clients tell me when I was on the phone, well, it's nice you made it back. They didn't know why I was out. They just knew I wasn't there. Boy, you must take off a lot. There, I'm like, well, <laughs> I had some. And when you tell them, well, I had some medical issues, they say, oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> they feel bad. But yeah. I'm like well it's okay it's, you know it's it happens so all right man cool so uh what are we talking about this show show number 32 okay. man so we don't normally talk about news but i do want to mention a couple of things one this is a, most of y'all if you're not listening live will know this by then but steve job resigns as ceo of apple that is a shock i Everybody knew it was coming. He's been on medical leave, but that's a shock when I saw that this or late this afternoon. Wow. Um, now is he is is he not taking a role within a company anymore? Or is he going to take a lesser role? He's he's going to be chairman of the board, so he's still going to be around, a chairman of the board and an employee of Apple. Okay. So. Like I said earlier, he didn't get hit by a bus. He's still going to be around. He's still going to have an influence over the direction of where Apple's going to go. But it's an in, it's maybe a lesser influence. Mm -hmm. now, I don't know if he can have a lesser influence. He's still going to be there. Right. Uh, so I think it's going to be – I think it's good. Everybody knew this was coming. Everybody knew he couldn't be CEO forever. So there had to be a succession at some point. So it might as well be now. Uh, he's still going to be involved. It can be a, a gradual transition over to Tim Cook. Yeah, you know, a lot of people think the um, that the when Steve Jobs leaves that the company is going to go crap. But the reality right. is, is that is, that's not the case, right? <laughs> that, that's I don't think so. No, I don't. I think Apple's course is pretty much set for a while, mm -hmm. even a few years. I'm sure that the roadmap to what they want to do is laid out years in advance. So. And he'll and he'll even be there for a while longer, and and a different role, but he'll be there. So yeah. they're not going to be s disappear into a black hole and go away. Uh, and it won't mean the end of Apple by any means. So cool, man. Hey, man. Um, come out. I'm sorry. Oh no, I'm sorry to interrupt, but if you can, I can't change the camera angle because if my the PC. But when you hold your head up, I like I like that. It's perfect. Perfect shot. Perfect. Again. But then, but when you get inside the Matt Rain rant, and then like your head starts going down. So. <laughs> okay. All right, bro. I'm sorry about that. But go ahead. No, it's okay. All right. So anyway, that's. I just wanted to mention that. I don't know if people heard, but it it seems shocking, but hopefully it won't really mean much in the near future for Apple. Oh, agreed, man. Um, you know, I I don't own any Apple products, but I know enough that they're people got them and people love them and they're easy to use and so. Well, I wouldn't say I own a lot of Apple products. I mean, on this desk, I've got two iPods, an iPhone, and MacBook Pro, and an iMac. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you you are a bad example. <laughs> <laughs> so, but anyway, I just want to mention it. And it, the next thing, which is news, but I think this has a bigger impact over a lot of people in the in our IT world, is the news from HP. Now, of course, the initial news was wrong. I don't know if people have been kept up with this. Of course, HP said they're killing off WebOS and they're going to sell off the PC division. It sounds like 
well, it's not like they killed WebOS, but right. they didn't really, which, which puts of how they handled this, I think, in a, a bad way. And it, it, consumers lose faith. And even I was questioning, we sell a lot of HP computers, HP servers, HP desk workstations. Should I be looking to resell something else? Right. Dell is the second leading PC manufacturer followed by Lenovo. So we do sell Dells, but mostly we sell HPs. Now, of course, the WebOS HP touchpad didn't surprise me at all that that didn't sell. Uh, really, there's no tablet that's selling well other than the iPad. But right, and because uh, I, I think we discussed a little bit earlier, they gave me HP Slate to demo out, and um, so I wasn't too happy with it. But then I heard that they were going to do away with the Windows 7 OS because it did come with a full version of Windows 7, and um, they're going to put the Web OS on there, and... Then I guess that's not happening, huh? Yeah. So I thought when this touchpad was recalled, or they couldn't sell them at initially four ninety nine, reduced to three ninety nine, and they still couldn't move them on the market for forty one days, and they killed it. Now, of course, they reduced the price to ninety nine dollars. So I tried to find one. <laughs> I tried to find one. They they were out of the local Best Buys here. So I couldn't get one. I was going to get at least one for $99. But what does that say about what you think this device is worth? They're selling out at $99, but at $399, nobody was touching them. Yeah. So they're not killing off WebOS. They said they're going to develop WebOS. So somebody may pick this up. They may license it out to certain people. But if HP is saying... We can't make a device that anybody wants to buy with this web OS. Maybe you can. I, I don't have faith in it. Hey, you know, I'm gonna I'm gonna have to agree there. It's like when the Windows brought out their mobile version, the competition to the Android and the the, the iPhone. I mean, I I play with it and I put it down after like two minutes. It was totally unattractive. Big gigantic the buttons like I was in third grade, and I don't know anyone <laughs> who owns that phone. Yeah. You know. So we'll see what happens with WebOS. I was going to get one because I like I like to play with WebOS. I've never used WebOS. I thought, well, it can be good for something. Mm -hmm. uh, if I don't like it, I'll just give it to the kids like I normally do. Um, speaking of, my daughter loves the Chromebook, which I haven't seen in a while because she took it. Um, but then the selling off of the PC division is what concerns me more. It looks like they are going to be spinning this off to a new company or selling it off to somebody else, which... As you know, when these companies get sold, support for what you've already bought can be hit or miss. Yes. And we have a lot of HPs out there. A lot of HPs. <laughs> yes. We have, in our shop, we have about 4,000 HPs. Yeah. So you've got more, well, a couple hundred clients. Some have 30, 40 computers sure. each. So we sure. have quite a bit, too. And the customer doesn't care if this is a three-year warranty. They don't care that it was, they don't even know that it was sold. If I'm trying to call and get a replacement hard drive or motherboard, you, I'm worried you're going to get the runaround. Oh, that was the division here. That was before we took over. We're not going to warranty that or we're not going to honor that. Or yeah. you got to go through hoops. And I had this with Gateway because Gateway's been sold a few times. And you call and try and get support on a Gateway computer. You've got to find out when did you buy it. Okay, well, at this time it was these people or these people. It's just a nightmare. So. It's going to be interesting to see what happens with them. We may I have to talk with my partners, but we may start selling more Dells, Dells more Dells than HPs because now servers will stick with HP. I don't think HP is going to get rid of the server line, just the desktops and the notebooks. I'm hoping, but it, I don't want to get into a, a mess in a few years of things that aren't being supported that we got to eat the cost because we sold the sand and had a three year warranty. Yeah, I know. And I agree, and um, I don't know. I guess we'll see what time plays out and see and see what happens. But it would definitely, whatever they decide to do, will affect tons of people. I mean, because how many HP shops are there, you know? Exactly. And I don't know why HP is doing this. Is it that they're not making enough money on the PCs, or they just want to reimagine themselves to a cloud-based service provider? But... They're the leading 
global PC sales company and for them to be getting out of it and not want to do it, what does that say about other PC manufacturers? Can they make money or do they want to do it? This might mean be good for Dell. They may sell more computers, but All right. we'll have to see. Yeah. I like the somebody told me they should spin it off and name it Compaq, which I thought was funny. Name it Compaq. Yeah, well, um, I don't, I don't know too much about the subject matter, but uh, I guess between here and the, the next show, we'll, I'll do some research and poking around and see, see what we find. So, and they may not sell it off at all. They said they're looking into, they're they're looking into alternatives or solutions. So it may come about where they may just forget about it. We're not going to sell it. Where they may, so we don't know exactly what they're doing. I don't even think they know what they're doing. They're in, in over the next twelve months. They said they're going to be looking into their. Um, uh, their options. So, right. something to think about if you're going to be selling computers with with their uncertainty, you want to think about what's going to happen with that. As far as what it means for you, so computers that you have to support down the road. Gotcha. So, so that's it for that news portion. <laughs> I got okay. a couple of, of stories. Of course, and the stories have morals for <laughs> things to learn from. The one. I had an interesting, and this goes back to, I talked about last week, the, the DD problem with Outlook opening Word and Excel files that were double-clicked slowly. Yes. They were slow to open. So I told the, the, the user, of course, their initial complaint was, was Outlook wasn't working. And I showed her it wasn't Outlook. It was Word and Excel. And I showed her, I demonstrated what the issue was. It's Word and Excel. Something's interfering with Word or Excel. And it's, I explained to where it's something is waiting for a response. Word, you open Word or you click, you, you click this document. It's trying to exchange information with something on the computer. When that doesn't respond, it opens. Right. I said, so I said, I have this workaround right now. I'm going to be researching a permanent fix. But for right now, it opens fine. I'm going to get back to you when I have something to try or in, in the next step in the troubleshooting process. I tell them because I don't say it's fixed until it's fixed. I say the next step in the troubleshooting process. So I agree. And that's, and that's a good, good, um, what's the words I'm looking for? That's a good way to approach it. And you don't want, don't patch problem. Cause when you patch problems, it's going to come back. You know, right. and like to the customer, like Matt just said that you're addressing the issue and you're, you're, you're troubleshooting because you want to resolve the issue. That's what your job is. I mean, don't, you know, it's not like you have a whole row of duct tape and just patching around problems. <laughs> well, you know, and some people do that, but then you run into many, many problems and yeah. usually get replaced by somebody else. So, mm -hmm. so I made it clear I was going to get back to her that this was a workaround and I'm going to let you know. So she calls me and she says, Outlook is doing the same thing. I said, okay, well, let's take a look at it. I said, sometimes those settings aren't permanent. So maybe they got reset. Uh, and I told her that may happen. So I connected to her computer and I said, show me what's happening. Well, this time she went to an email with a, a link, a web link, a URL. And she clicked on the URL and she got the same little waiting thing. I said, okay, well, that's not the exact same thing because this is not a Word or Excel document. This is a, a link to an internet address. Well, it's doing the same thing. I say, well, I understand the symptoms are the same. Um, and she says something about, well, I guess she didn't fix it the first time. And the way, and usually I might let this go, but she kept on, she kept on, she wouldn't let me talk. And I was gonna say, well, let's look into it. Maybe I can apply this workaround for now. And she kept saying, well, if you just fix it right the first time. So finally, I, you, when you run into these situations, I could have left it alone and said, well, let me, let me just see. But, the reason I didn't want to leave this alone was because if I just found a workaround and, and again reminded her that I'm going to get back to her and I'm doing, I have a case open with Microsoft and we're working on how to find what this is. I, I told her that, but I said, she kept going, you know, I need to fix the first time and it's to work. So I told her, oh wait, I'm sorry. So if I didn't, if I didn't say anything. Then in her mind, she's got in her mind that I can't fix things the first time. Right, because of the comment that, that she made to you. Right, true or not, that's already in her mind. So one, I thought I need to say something so she knows that that's not true because I don't want her thinking that I can't fix things. 
and she might lose faith. So I had to choose to kind of confront her a little bit. I told her, I told her I never said it was fixed. I said, I told you that I made a workaround and I even sent her an email after I did the workaround reminding her what was done. And I even showed her the email that said it, the issue is not fixed. There was a workaround in place to, to try and get around the problem so you can work while I research a solution. And so I had to, I mean, I could tell she was kind of taken aback when I told her I never said it was fixed. It was a workaround. And the original complaint was specific to Word and Excel documents. I asked you if any other thing was opening slow when you told me no. I said, but now you're telling me that you haven't been able to open up URL links for weeks also, which you never told me. So it's hard for me to troubleshoot a problem if I don't have the full description. I so agree. Now that I, now that I know you're getting this, we can address it. And it's possible I can have a workaround until a real solution is found. But I, I, had to, I did not, I never said this was fixed. In fact, the opposite, I'm looking for a fix. So I could tell she didn't like it. And after I said that, she kind of went, she kind of laid back a little bit and said, well, okay, well, let's see what we can do and see if we can get it working later on. So I just didn't want to leave it with her thinking, because it's true or not. If it's in her mind, that's what she, in, in, two, in, true. in two months, she's going to remember, oh, yeah, I remember something about where you couldn't fix this issue. Exactly. Like, it, and I have a story that kind of relates to that where someone had called me up with an issue, and um, hmm, okay, okay, I have to be careful of the story. But the, I, told, I told person B that before I can troubleshoot my steps that they need to do their and the troubleshooting. I was talking to another technical the person in a different department. So here come the emails saying that Lalo refused to help. No, <laughs> we had a conversation and you were going to do your part to investigate if the problem was on your end, and then we'll do mine. But, you know, in the email trail, it seemed like I was like, nope, I'm not doing it. Lost yeah. translation, you know? And that's why I do a lot of stuff by email after I've discussed something with them in our, in our track ticket system, there's detail in there that I can enter there that they get a copy of it. But I, I sometimes, if it's not in there for some reason, if they email directly, I'll respond back and I'll make clear things that I say, because one, they may come back and say, you said this. I agree. And that but happens. It, it all the time, all the time. But I also use it in case I need to come back to it. In this case, I pulled up the email that I sent her. I'm, at, I'm sitting at her computer, and I pulled up the email that I sent her, and I let her read it, and I said, I never said it was fixed. And I said, if you look further back in the string, you'll see I asked you where what was what file types you were having issues with, and you told me Word and Excel. And I said, so nothing else, everything else works fine. You, she replied back, let me test. And she replied back saying, yes, everything else works fine. But... She probably, who knows what she thought. She may have yeah. thought that she told me that links didn't work. Mm -hmm. But when she realized, oh, yeah, I, I didn't say that. So I just want her to know two months from now, some vague recollection of I couldn't fix it. No, that's not what happened. <laughs> uh, and I agree. So if you, if you the takeaway from the story Matt is, is telling here, whatever discussions you have, if it's with your boss, with your fellow employee, with a, a, a client, just put it in writing. Because like Matt, is saying here, I've seen where these stories come through eight months later. Well, back and you then do here, and I'll share a story with a past job. Um, past job I had, they 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 bid on contracts, and I was part of the process because they would come to me and say, you know, can we create a VPN here? Can we do this and that and blah blah blah? And so this a contract was lost for some major money. Talk about in the million dollars, and they're like, well. We lost it because of Lalo, because he's, or some type of communication. I'm like, no, in, in the email here, it clearly states that I told you A, B, and C. That email, in a sense, saved my job. Because I had it there in communication because person A was saying that I said something totally different. But, you know, again, if you follow communication and email, and if you can get into that habit, it might save your butt. Right. And... Don't be afraid to stand up for yourself. That doesn't mean be defensive every right. time 
So somebody tells you something, and I'm, I might have let it go if she only mentioned it once or twice or if she was kind of joking, but, you know, it's a case-by-case -case thing. I could tell from how she kept saying it over and over again and the tone that she really thought that it should be fixed mm -hmm. that, and that, it was, that I said it was fixed. So I didn't drop that. Um, a lot of times you do because you can't be defensive every time somebody talks to you. Right, right. And the and the whole point is not to be arrogant about it. Be professional because, you know, these are clients that you are going to have in the future. And if you fix a problem, you'll be surprised how they just forget about all the, you know, all the bad stuff. But so, but sometimes it does, you know, we are human. You know, you, you could be having a bad day and it just rubs you the wrong way. But right. I, but I think that you handled it incorrectly, and then, and you said that she backed off, and she said, "Okay, let's fix it." All right. Yeah, and I said, and I, I did a workaround for that one, and I said, "Remember, this is not a permanent fix. I'm still researching the fix." You know, I make it clear when I talk to clients, I always mention the troubleshooting process. Mm -hmm. We'll do this step, and we'll have to monitor. If that doesn't work, we'll try. And we'll go take the. We'll take the troubleshooting process further, but we have to identify what's going on. So, exactly. Careful what you say, <laughs> email or writing somehow, and don't be afraid to don't let customers walk all over you. That's one thing you can't do. Right. Which Matt's not saying fly off the handle. <laughs> Did I, there's a big difference there. You know, don't don't talk. You know, because because we see it all the time. Uh, you know, I work with people that, you know, talk to clients as if they're technicians. And some people get insulted because they're they're saying, well, I'm not stupid. Don't talk to me like I'm a five-year-old. Layman terms. Your PC couldn't go online because, you you know, you had a bad that, that cable. You know, don't go into the IP config and trace route and how you can ping the router. It can go right over the head. <laughs> and, you know, and people appreciate that, you know, and and I'm sure uh, another story when I first got hired for a network admin job, I was in a meeting with all the big wigs and um, we were setting up an exchange, the server, and he asked me a question of how IMAP worked. And I paused and I was like, hmm, and then a big old whiteboard and I grabbed the marker and I started drawing. I can't draw, but I started drawing like a, a stickman. And boxes and the whole room went <gasps> like if I was insulting the guy. And then like, <laughs> but I mean, he was like the owner and the president. And he said, no, I like this because I can understand this. I wasn't insulting him, but I was trying to get a way to um, and communicate. And I got approved for the, the server and the licenses. Again, if I was talking over the guy's head, I mean, he would have said, I have no idea what you're talking about. I'm not going to give you that much money. Right. So. Yeah, it's the case by case thing. So. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah, don't fly off the handle. That's a good phrase. Don't fly off. Don't the fly handle. off the handle, please. Of course, sometimes it's necessary, but that's a different story. <laughs> you know what, man? When I think that we are closing, you can just say sometimes it's necessary. <laughs> never say never. Okay. So that that's the that's the end of that story. But uh, that user, it, well, not not quite. That user made me mad when they said that, but I did not get mad back. I made sure I kept my tone level and said, I never said it was fixed. Mm -hmm. So that's how I started off and that's the tone I kept it. So, okay. and you can say there may have been some misunderstanding, but here's what I said. So, because it happens. Yeah. Misunderstanding by you. I should have said, no, <laughs> <laughs> maybe you misunderstood. So, uh, so this is, I had another call, which I thought was pretty funny. Sometimes clients, clients leave uh, us. For whatever reason, sometimes we fire their client. Sometimes they decide that I've had co smaller companies tell us that we're too big to handle them. So they want to go to a one man guy, which I, I find ridiculous. But or for whatever reason, they go. They can get this guy for $30 an hour less. So they're going to go. So in this case, this client left because they, this guy was, I think, $30 an hour cheaper. And it was a single guy. There's what, six or seven of us techs full-time? He's one guy. So that's fine. Um, and I hear back from these people sometimes, and I got a call from one of them uh, the other day saying that there must be something wrong with the server. Now, the server is one we put in years ago. And the guy that got 
to has been taking care of in the past year or so said uh, he doesn't really know servers. <laughs> so when they called me, I said, well, he doesn't know servers. How is he able to support you for the past year? Well, we haven't had any issues with the server until now. I said, so what issues do you think you have with the server? <laughs> no, I said, what do you think you... So anyway, they said everything's slow. Nothing works. We log in. And, well, originally it was the owner. I love that. Nothing works. Right. So originally it was the owner. The owner said, my computer locks up. It's slow. I can't send emails, this and that. And I said, well, is this just you or is it affect other people? I don't know. <laughs> well, we need to find out because the troubleshooting steps are different right. if it's just you or if it's everybody. He said, well, I'll find out and I'll call you back. So they called back the next day and they said, well, and he, they must have forgot that they were supposed to check into this and call me because they called me the next day saying, we haven't heard back from you and everybody's down right now. I said, okay, well, okay, so the problem affects everybody. Uh, when we talked last, you were going to check to see how widespread the problem was and get back to me. So you're saying now that it affects everybody? Yes, it affects everybody. And I said, and your IT person, what has he done so far? I don't know what he's done, but he said it's a server. Okay. I'll come look at it. So the key is when they said it affects everybody, of course, that means something network related somehow. And when I got there, I said, what, tell me what's slow. When you get in the morning, what do you do? We log on. And I said, how fast is that? It takes forever, 30, 40 minutes. So, okay. And after that, what happens? Initial log on to the, the domain. Right. Which right away is going to tell me DNS when it takes a long time to log in. Right. And I, but I didn't say anything. So I'm, letting, I'm, I'm getting the full story. Right, so they right. said it takes forever. Okay. What happens after that? Well, sometimes I can do this. Sometimes I can't access files. Well, if I click on the drive letters, it takes forever to open. Okay. As it, and so I asked him, has anything changed recently? No, nothing's changed. I said, so no new equipment, no new computers, nothing's changed. No, nothing's changed. So I already know by this time that it's DNS. So I'm thinking, what happened with DNS? I know what their static IP should be because we still have it documented. They're still on the same IP. So they didn't change their ISP. Then nothing had changed. I go to a computer. First thing I do, IP config slash all from a computer. And what's the DNS pointing to? Well, okay. That's what I noticed second. Second? Okay. What, you... what I was looking for first was DHCP server. So, and okay. DHCP server was not the server. Oh, it was pulling from the router? It was pulling from the router. Mm -hmm. And then I looked and, of course, noticed, because by itself, that would not be a major issue as long as the DNS, he might have changed the router to give out, to do DHP for some reason. And as long as he gave out the server's IP address as DNS address, it would have worked fine. Right. But what he did was it has, it's pointing to two public DNS servers. So all the computers are getting public DNS addresses. Oh. So I go look at the router, and it's not the router we left in place. And I said, what, what is this router? When was this put in? Uh, I don't know. We could go. Or we could go. Okay. So when you said nothing's changed, you mean <laughs> nothing except the router. One of the most critical parts. <laughs> yeah, but the, uh, he said, yeah, that changed. But our IT guy said that's not going to affect it. I said, okay, well... I, Again, if I ask you what changed, it's nice to get a, an idea of what's changed, if you think it's relevant or not, because it may be relevant, it may not be. So has anything else changed that you know of that's relevant or not? Anything? No, that's it. Just just the router. Okay. Of course, go into the router. DHCP is turned on. Now, this guy said he wasn't familiar with routers. So maybe he didn't even know that the server was doing DHCP. Because if he's only doing residential stuff and small business stuff without servers, of course the router is going to be doing DHCP. Right. So he may have put this in, not even realizing what their IPs were already, what their DNS was set to, what their scope was or anything. He might thought, great, I'm getting an IP, I can get a line, router works. But that's not what happens. So I showed them that's that was wrong, so I turned it off. Now, of course... When small business server detects another 
DHCP server on the network, what does it do? It shuts off. It's very submissive. <laughs> it detects another DHCP server and says, okay, fine, you can do it. I'm just going to disable myself. How nice of the uh, DHCP server. It doesn't want to confront another DHCP server. It's not confrontational. Mm -hmm. So it gives up. You know, another DHCP server, fine, you can do it. I'm just going to go away. So disable DHCP on the router and re-enable it, reauthorize it on the small business server, release and renew all the IPs on the workstations and the printers because I left the printers with reservations from the server. So the printers were getting IPs now from the router, which were whatever. So which nobody could print either. No one can print. Which they didn't tell me. And I said, can you, can you print? And they said, no, we can't print either. Okay, so that's another thing that's not working. Great. <laughs> I like how these incomplete lists are, are yeah. really helpful. So once all that was done, everything was fine. Now, the reason this took a few days to become a problem is because of the DHCP lease. lease from the other server. Yep. So once that lease expired and once the computers tried to renew, that's when it grabbed it from the router. So it didn't happen right away. So in fact, this guy may have put the router in, said, oh, it works, I'm leaving. Nothing's, no calls for a day or two, I'm good. So that's why he probably thought, it's not the router, it's gotta be the server not responding. Yeah, because- the Computers uh, can get online great. Uh, correct me <laughs> if I'm wrong, if a computer has IP address, halfway through it tries to renew itself against the DHP, right, is, is it halfway through? At halfway through, it tries to renew its current lease. Right. Um, but there's some circumstances where if it can't reach a DHCP server, it'll just keep its lease for longer. So it tries it halfway, then another halfway it tries again. Right. Halfway of that and halfway of that. Yeah, and... Right. So they may not have been an issue right away. They may have worked fine because they had their, their right leases. So as one person got a new lease, he may have been slow. So maybe when the guy talked to me the night before, he was, he, maybe he was the only one slow. But the next day, they all had leases. Especially when you have the 40-minute the login for a domain, I mean. Right. Any long, any login like that, it's going to be DNS. So I knew it was DNS as soon as I said that without even looking at anything. Because I logged into the server, which is funny. I didn't tell them this, but they didn't change the admin password on the, on the server. <laughs> so I logged in remotely with the first time he called me. Now, I didn't do this until after he asked me to look at it, of course. Okay, there you go. But, there right. Go. He, so he asked me to look at it. So. I asked him what the problem was, and he said he couldn't know. So or he, he wasn't sure how widespread it was. So while he was saying that, they already engaged me to look at it. So I logged in the server. The server's fine. Now, I did not check the DHCP server at that time. Had I checked the DHCP service, I would have known what is disabled. So Now, um, did he tell you and uh, why he changed the router for? Uh, the other one went out or something. Yeah, he didn't really tell me. Oh, okay. They put in a, it was a cheap, cheap router. Okay. Um, Still got a watch guard and put a link this. I'm not sure why. Maybe he didn't yes. know how to. Maybe he, well, maybe he didn't know how to program the watch guard because interfaces can be confusing if you haven't used them before. It's not like a Linksys or a D-Link, so it can be confusing. I always love how every show we have to work in the, the word watch guard. <laughs> I have them everywhere. That's like when you watch a movie and they. It seems like they always say the name of the title and the movie at some point. The Pondage Pro. At some point, you would have the word watch guard. <laughs> yeah, I don't know why. I didn't even see it. I didn't, I didn't ask. I didn't ask because really, I'm, I, don't, I don't think we're doing work for them anymore. I think they just called us for this one issue because right. their current guy thought it was the server. Now, I showed him that it wasn't the server, but now it, they may call again. I don't know. So how they can have faith in this guy when he couldn't figure out a simple, which I think is a simple problem, and how you can have a guy who doesn't know servers try and support you when you have a server i'm not sure yeah and and you stated it was for for about a year that this guy is maintaining them yeah so they probably which tells me they haven't had an issue with the server in a year which is good because that means we sold them a good server and it's been working fine without okay. any issues that that or he reboots the bots you know who wanted the issue <laughs> well he didn't change the password so i'm not sure what he's doing so I didn't see any, I didn't see any changes on the server since we've done so that was good but I didn't look very long I just looked long enough to make sure the DNS forwarders were correct and the DHCP service was working and remember to do the printers because if I didn't do the printers 
I would have left and they wouldn't be able to print. So, so I just power cycle those and let them grab IPs. So I, I think it's funny. There's a reason, obviously, why his rate's cheaper. Yeah. But the company sees the bottom line per hour charge. I get, I come in there, he couldn't figure this out for a few days. And I, doing support for business, I know slow logins, this and that. I know something had to change, and I know it's probably DNS. Right. And, you know, and it's not, you know, that's your, that's your expertise. I mean, you have a guy that's not a server guy. I mean, I, I wouldn't expect him to check that DNS or DHICP, so. No, but I can, I can imagine what he was telling those guys. Oh, yeah. Server. I say, well, you know, that server, you know, it's causing issues. I think you need to call the guys who uh, sold it to you and get you, you know, find out what's going on with it. So, mm -hmm. because when they called, they were certain uh, our server's having an issue. Mm -hmm. Now, they didn't say server down, strangely. They said having an issue, major problems, they said, with our server. Because if you would have said a server down, then at that point. <laughs> well, they could get to it. It was really, really slow, but they could get to it. So they knew it wasn't down. They just knew there was a major in their, in their, Exact words, major issues with the server. Mm -hmm. And of course, I have to ask him, why did you think you had a problem with the server? Was my first question. Yeah. Or how have you been for the past year? Oh, you, you having problems? Yeah. You know, our rates have gone up in the past year. Is that, is that okay? <laughs> <laughs> we had a rate increase. Just to let you, just to let you know. Yeah. I'm going to send you an email. Just go ahead and reply that you agree. <laughs> and then we'll, we'll go ahead and we'll carry on. Uh, mm -hmm. So we'll see what, uh, yeah, I didn't tell him about the rate increase. We did have a rate increase, which I didn't tell him about. So we'll, they'll get a bill, and uh, well, we'll see. Uh, but you know what? If they have their own in-house in-house technical person, they call you. There's the expectation that they're gonna pay. Uh, yeah, you know, I mean, no one calls. Not... You know, I'm pretty sure before they called you, they go, "Man, do we have, do we really have to call this guy? Are you sure you have no idea what's going on?" You know, and then they. Yeah, I can imagine they hated they hated calling us. I mean, and we didn't have really a bad parting. It's just they said, "Look, this guy's cheaper." Oh, sure, but it's anyway, business. That's fine. That's fine. It's business. So, it happens. I mean, they usually call back. I don't think we've had any clients that have left. We've only had a handful of clients leave in the past couple of years, and they've all called back for some reason or another okay. because this person can't figure it out. Sometimes they tell me, and one client in particular, the same guy took over two of our old clients. And we've had to do work for them a few times because he can't ever figure he can't figure the things out. So they call us. So they call us and they say it's in in, in his words. He says we need the super IT team now because he can't figure it out. Okay, that's fine. Yeah, and then you know, like unfortunately, it doesn't make you uh, not. I'm not gonna use the word. It doesn't make you look good. But a lot of times these folks, it, it makes them realize how critical you are to the operation just put it that way you know that's what i meant to say so. well if i was bringing my car somewhere to get worked on and i bring it there for years my car ran great when i got my car service from them regularly but then i decided to go to this new mechanic because he's cheaper but yet he can't fix my problem my car runs terrible and then i call my old mechanic back i give it to him he fixes it right away why would i go back to the other mechanic i, I don't agree. understand but that's what happens sometimes so i agree man all right, man, cool. Uh, we got some emails? Um, I got one more quick. Oh, email. I'm sorry. On the notes. Go ahead. Go ahead. I'm sorry. In fact, I overlooked that. Sorry. Um, it, well, it wasn't an email. I'm sorry. It's my fault, people. It's Matt's fault, not Lalo's. So I had an interesting call. Not interesting. Kind of a sad story. But I had a user, a company, that needed to get into an account. And they. Let me start over. The initial call was, I need to be added to this distribution group because this other girl is out. And I need the emails. I need to be in the group, and I want whatever emails were sent to that group as of 10 days ago forward. So, of course, I added them to the group, but I said, I can't retroactively send you emails sent to the group. The only person in the distribution group was the girl who was out. So they sometimes have people come in and out of that group as salespeople come and go. At the, at the time, she was the only person in the group. So all the emails went to her account. And they say, well, I don't know what to say because we can't contact this girl. She's out for personal reasons. We don't want to disturb her, but we need these emails. So I had to come up with a way 
to forward these emails that were sent to her account without resetting her password because she was dealing with some personal things and she probably needed her phone to work with her email. If I reset her password, she would have to call and find out what, what's going on. I can't get in. I don't want her to deal with that when she was dealing with what she was dealing with. Right. So I didn't want to disturb her. I didn't want to reset her password, but they needed the emails for, for business reasons because they had time sensitive material. And as clients say, clients are always dead in the water, which is a gruesome picture, but clients always say they're dead in the water. <laughs> right. Um, do, you, do, your, do your people say that? I don't know. Dead, they're dead in the water? Come on. Never. They never say that? Maybe it's down here. No, they, no, no. It, it, you know, it, it always happens. It, you know, if they've come for it, then after, after talking to them, it we had this conversation last week. Like, you know, I have no problem in uh, exped expediting a case, but um, when it's not really that important, and you log into the thing. It, you know, it, it's a sign when you ask them what the login is, and they go, "I don't know what it is." Yeah, but you use it every day. No, I haven't used it in about too much. Oh, but they always use the phrase "dead in the water." I never understood that phrase. No, dead in the water. I guess it's like without a paddle. Yeah. What they mean, but it paints a different picture. So anyway. I found a way to do this. So, and it, this is Exchange Small Business Server 03. So, I created a new account. And I'll tell you why in a second. So, I created a new account. I named it whatever. Uh, I named it Network Admin, I think. Some so I could identify it. I, did, I mean, it's a normal user, not an admin user. Went into the user account of the girl who was gone. And you go into Exchange Advanced and Mailbox Rights, I think it is. And I added this user. I gave this user send as permission and full mailbox access. Now, the reason I didn't do it with the administrator account is because administrator account already has certain rights to the mailbox. And I, I don't like to change those rights. Okay. So it's better to just create a new account. I do the same thing if I'm doing any kind of EX merge or anything. I create a new account just for that because it's easy to remove it later on. I, I don't want to edit the administrator right. So that's why I created the new account so I can easily remove it. Then her computer was still on at the office. So I logged in to the computer, opened the Outlook as network admin. You can go in exchange in the exchange profile. You can go open additional mailboxes. So open additional mailboxes, opened hers. So now I see my mailbox and I see her mailbox. They told me which four emails they were looking for, found them, forwarded them off. So that's the end of that. So that way, they got their emails forwarded to them. I'm not disturbing her. I'm not resetting her password. None of her settings have changed on her Outlook when she logs in at all, only through the network admin, which I can delete that profile and delete the account when I'm done. Sweet. That's a, a crafty way to get around that. Because uh, yes. most people do just change the password, but then again, like you said, there's a react, there's a um, an after effect to doing that. And yeah, and that's what I would normally do. But she was going through some personal issues, and I did, I did not want to disturb her. So yeah, uh, that that was why. If this is a user that was already gone, no big deal. Or if the user just out for the afternoon, no big deal for whatever. But yeah, it's a way to get around it. So gotcha. Oh, and I'm sorry. I got to say this. This is a funny story. I can't believe I just, I just remember when you talked about the login thing just a minute ago, I got a call from a user. This is a quick story. This is just a, just a funny story. I think you just said their website wasn't working. Okay. I said, well, we don't do web design. We didn't design the website, but if you want to call the people who designed it, you know, call them I said, well, you know, can you take a look at it? I said, well, I said, what's going on? Normally, I would say no, but I said, well, what's going on? Well, I go to the form. We have a submission form. <sighs> Never mind. I don't want to talk about this anymore. The person, <laughs> the person may listen to this. Okay. And I don't want to, I don't want to say anything. All righty. So let's just cancel that story. Sounds good. I'm pretty sure. I, I, I can tell you in the post show if you want. I'm pretty sure. Yes, Steve will funny. edit that portion out. <laughs> Yeah, I'd say the post show, but it's a quick story, but it's pretty funny. Okay, so we got a few emails to read. All right, and you have, uh, and let me give you a break from, so you can catch your breath. One is from Dante. 
He says, would you recommend implementing the LTL drive using an external one or an internal if the server is not a brand new purchase? I'm imp implementing a backup for an existing server 2003 system. You mentioned in your response as to what happens if an RDX tape becomes full. What happens if the LTL tape is full or already has data on it? Does it simply rewrite it if data is already on it? Okay, so the first question, external or internal, I, I usually do external LTO drives. Even if it's a new system, I'll usually do external drives because they're easy to move and swap around if need be. Okay. Um, we have a few internal, but normally I'll do external. So definitely for an existing system, I'm going to do an external. Of course, you may need a card to put in, a controller card to put in the computer, but external drive. Um... What happens if the LTO tape is full? Depends on what the backup settings are. We normally set our backup jobs to overwrite the tape. Okay. So in our case, if they have a Monday through Friday tape, they may have one set, two sets, three sets, whatever they have. Small businesses usually only have one set. So if they have five tapes, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. So every Monday, the tape's overwritten. We do full backups on our clients every night overwrite the tapes some people do things differently some people do a full backup once a once a week and do incremental during the week it, i don't like doing that if i've got the backup window to do a full backup i'm gonna do a full backup but then at that point you just need the last tape right if it's easier to restore if you have enough tapes to I do that obviously and the backup window so these LTO drives are pretty fast. You can back up 500 gigs pretty fast on the LTO drive. So it also depends on what your backup window is. They leave at standard company, leave at five or six, then it'll come back towards eight. Well, you got plenty of a backup window there. You can start at 10, and it'll be done by three o'clock in the morning usually. So if your backup window is there, I do a full backup. Erase the tape. Because you also, don't forget, you also have the shadow copies that go back further if you need to restore the simple file. The tape's mainly there for a complete system failure, basically. Yeah. Uh, so that, does that answer that one? Yep, I think that covers that. Okay. All right, and uh, you have an email from? Jared, email right? from Jared. Yes. Uh, this was an interesting, let's see. Email from Jared. He says, if I can find the start of it. Yeah, it's a it's a long email trail. For I have a home. long question. Yeah, he says I have a long question regarding DNS. We have quite a number of clients who have multiple internet connections, usually two or three, and the problem we have is that when their primary internet connection goes down, we have an issue with DNS not resolving correctly. An example is a client who has two IP addresses, each from a different provider. Say 1.1.1.1 from ISP1 and 2.2.2 from ISP2. We have a DNS record, mail.abc.com, that points to 1.1.1 and 2.2.2. The problem we have is that when either provider is down, it seems like DNS queries from the internet use a round-robin approach, as sometimes it shows ISP1 IP address, and others it will show ISP2 address. I wanted to confirm that the only solution to fix this would be to use a DNS host monitoring service, which offer a very low TTL, just time to live, such as five minutes, and will make the address record change automatically. If this is the case, do you have any recommendations? We found EasyDNS.com pretty affordable, but always looking for others. Or if you have a, if you know of a way we can do it without a third party involved. So, what he means is. You've got, let's say you got, you got your router, right? You might have two external interfaces coming into that router, or it could be two separate routers too. So let's say you have a phone, you're out and about on the road. Your incoming mail server is mail.abc.com. And of course, if you do a DNS looking for mail.abc.com, you'll see he's got different IPs for that record. So if one of them's down, his phone may say it can't connect because that that internet connection is down. It tells you, oh, here, you want 1.1.1.1, .1 .1 .1, 
So when you go to connect, it's down. But a few minutes later, it may work because now it's getting 2.2.2.2. Right. So I misunderstood the question. So I replied back saying something about how many MX records do you have created? Thinking that was an MX record thing. But he actually has multiple MX records created, which you want because if you only have one MX record created, you can have an issue if you have multiple ISPs coming in. So he said he had multiple DNS, multiple MX records to be having, and he explained the issue I'm having is mainly with users that cannot connect, access their email via mail.abc.com from their smartphones. When ISP1 goes down, the DNS address record is still pointing to that ISP1 address. So I found, well, I've, I found a service from Dyn DNS, Dyn DNS Pro. Right. Uh, yep, yeah, Jerry got it in chat room. Um, Dyn DNS Pro, they offer 20 seconds TTL. 20 seconds? 20 seconds. So if you're doing a lookup for a mail that com, if that thing hasn't responded in 20 seconds, it gives you the next one. So you still have a possibility of it not connecting, but at 20 seconds, hopefully the user will notice that. Right, because a, it, a user may notice five minutes that they can't get mail, sure. but they may not notice twenty seconds. Because it will keep trying, and at that point, it will go to the backup IP. Right. So twenty seconds. He hasn't responded back. He said he was going to give it a try. I mean, it's not that easy to change over DNS hosting, so that may be a project to do. But right, that's one service if you're looking at implementing this. Dyn DNS Pro, they call it uh, they call it super dynamic TTL. 20 seconds. So check that out if you're needing multiple ISPs or multiple records coming into your shop. Uh, small businesses, this, um, these companies may be larger. We don't have a lot of businesses that have this issue. Mm -hmm. So small businesses may not see this much, but if you can, of course, if you're, and if you're going to be supporting a server that has this kind of stuff, you're going to be familiar with the setup anyway. Because yeah. you program the router with multiple multiple ISPs, but you may not have heard of this particular service. So he knew enough. I mean, he he knows that's what the problem is. He just didn't know about Dyn DNS Pro. So cool. Yeah, that and I another product and I used it for years. If you have a your home, the public IP address, it changes. But if you have the client run or if you have it that's sort of on your router, you know you can do lotto dot home. It's a predetermined domain that they set up, but you no longer have to know that it's 71 dot 22 dot blah 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 so right and that's yep. free i think for one ip address so yeah that's right cool uh we got a email from adam he says hey guys i've been listening to all of the pro shows many more than once and they have been very informative i was wondering what kind of router would you recommend for a school with about 60 client pcs and about 110 users in total they have a pretty simple uh, setup, a 10 meg pipe, server 2003 R2, which I uh, set up to handle D DHCP and DNS and Gmail, no exchange. A Barracuda 310 web filter, and they really won't be using that much bandwidth besides the occasional streaming of YouTube in the video. If I had to guess, they would have at most 30 users online simultaneously at any given time. The principal wants the ability to remote into her PC at the school, but that is the only remote user they're planning at the, at the time. They currently have an old Linksys residential class router and of course just isn't made for a setup like the one he describes. I'd like to get by as cheap as possible, but I don't want junk and I want it to last from five to eight six years. I like your input before I start shopping around. Thanks for giving me the information I need to begin my transition to commercial clients. All right. Come on, say so, it. Say it. You know what I told them? Yes. <laughs> you can say it, but you can say it. No, no. Say it Go ahead, because it, it sounds a lot better when it comes from w your mouth. Watch card, yeah. Um, unfortunately, as I told them in the email, uh, I had to get by as cheap as possible. So... As cheap as possible to me means which watch guard router am I going to get? Because they can range from 500 to thousands. So since we've already established a watch guard is what's needed, we just need to see which one 
he can get by with. So it's hard to say. I would need to look at some what exactly they're doing. If it's a if it if I'm going with at most thirty users online at once, you could probably get by with like like an XTM two series, maybe an XTM three series. And for but the, it really depends on as a, it depends on budget. Yeah, and and for the folks that are at home and they're listening, why explain to them why that Linksys router at Best Buy for eighty bucks it wouldn't work. Why is it that you need a watch guard or a Cisco or some type of appliance that's made for this? Well, it can't handle the traffic for one. Uh, it's meant it's designed for resident. The processor is not very fast in those things. It can't handle the bandwidth, so you're going to have a lot of collision. You're just going to have bad performance on on this residential router. Residential router is good for realistically ten computers, maybe. Uh, some of them are actually rated, but they just they they don't have the processing power. They're not very secure. There's really not much firewall embedded in those. Um, and I'm sorry, I said XTM three. And XTM, I don't want to go to XTM five. On him, so probably the XTM two. Okay. Um, it really depends. The only difference in the they got XTM 21, 22, 23. The only difference is that a, a few throughput speeds. It's got a few uh, different VPN um, abilities, branch office VPNs, that kind of thing. So he could probably get one of those. I've got. I've got some companies that have 30 users on XTM 23s and they seem to work fine. But if you get one of those home user home, they're not going to last five years. You're going to have to go yeah. reset that thing constantly because it gets locked up. And if you get 30 at once and they estimate 30 with 60 computers, you really should plan for 60 computers being online at once. Right. And then they don't have to be online as you, Everybody knows if the PC is on, it's you know doing traffic back and forth throughout the uh, network, doing all type of talking. Yeah. So, I mean, I'm sure WatchGuard would recommend the XTM5 series, but it's it's hard to say. It, I think in the end, XTM2 is what they would go with if they went with a router, a WatchGuard. But I would tell them this may not cover your needs, so it's hard to buy an X. Uh, a one and then have to upgrade another one because you're having issues. Now, if they've been getting by with the Linksys, that also makes me think that an XTM 2 series would work fine if they've been using a Linksys. Because, of course, the XTM 2 is going to be much better performance than the Linksys. Or they've been having the Linksys and it's just been choking. And once they put this new appliance in, they yeah. go, wow, it's, it's so much faster. Yeah. Cool. And how about the uh, the one user that need, the principal that needs to remote in? You know. Oh, like, that's not an issue. Yeah, as long as it got a RDP, as Computer Pro, log me well, in. Hopefully, well, it's got Server 2003. So, um, if they got Server 03, if there's a domain running, you can just use RWW Remote Web Workplace, or you can RDP straight to the uh, computer. Now, so got the appropriate settings in the router now you said that the remote work a workplace is available in small businesses is that like available oh, that's right. it says server 2003 yeah. so yeah that i'm sorry i misread that so yeah he'd have to rdp straight to the computer okay cool yeah. cool uh, so we got that that are usually the and, same and of course remember this says uh only one remote user that they are planning for, for at this time so that's the thing at this time <laughs> and if you want to last five to six years you may want to plan on more than 60 computers getting online at once. Maybe they can add more computers down the road. Yeah. So You always need to plan for growth because if you just plan your environment for just for the today, then a year from now, you, you know, when they hire 30 more people, and you, 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 you don't want to go inside the office and say, I need some more money to upgrade the equipment. Yeah. And especially if you get one that only handles 30, you can tell your user, well, you can, half you can get online. The yeah. other half kind of stay off. We're are we going to work in shifts? <laughs> so it, this kind of thing, they're on the edge, I think, of needing a two to five series. And in the end, they'd be budget, really, in this case. Mm -hmm. I'd give them a quote for each, and I'd say, 
the five is going to be definitely better. The two is probably going to work. Yep. Your better option and your best option. Then, right. I'd have to decide. Then, then when uh, they need to upgrade, like, do you remember when I wrote you an email? Said the best option. <laughs> that's not that, that, that's not the only option. Now, of course, Computer Pro recommends Sonic Wall. TZ190. So Sonic Wall is the way to go. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm not against Sonic Wall, like I said before. I just um, am used to watch card. And but I think that better sure. But filtering, better firewall, but but we but we agree here that they need a power for appliance other yeah, than the Linksys, yeah, so yeah. Right? I, Whichever not, route he goes. Watch card. Yeah. Yeah. All right, man. Cool. Um, I think that's the show. Uh we got all the emails out the way. Again, uh if you have any emails we from still got more that I think we didn't read yet. But yeah, we'll yeah, we're and we're catching up. Uh, we apologize for like the late start. As I said, no show next week. I'll be in Washington for some VDI training, man. Virtual desktops. Um, so we'll continue the week after. And um, Matt, um, where where can people find you today, man? Where can they find me? They can email me, matt at podnuts.com. Or... I've been trying to get back in the forums more, so check me on the. You want to post in the in, in the forums? Uh, post in the forums, not just me, but anybody can respond. But uh, hopefully, I'll see it uh, in the forums too. Especially if you post in the Podnets Pro section. I also, look in the networking section a lot too under the uh, PC side. So I usually see those. Got it. And you can contact me at Lalo at Podnuts dot com. So uh, again, thank you for everyone for joining the show live for being patient. Sorry for the late start. And um, if you're done downloading this via MP3, thank you, appreciate it. So, other than that, y'all have a beautiful weekend. We'll see you in about two weeks and keep those emails coming in. There's more that we have yet to read well on the show, and uh, then we'll go from there. So, hey, and else, Matt, before I sh shut her down. That's it. Thanks, everybody. Um, and like I said before, if you like the shows, you can go to iTunes and leave a yes. good review. If you don't like the shows, well, just don't listen. <laughs> don't <laughs> just, listen. There you go. Just go ahead kidding, and don't, 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 don't. If listen. you don't like the show, you can always email me, Matt at pilots.com and give him and give suggestions for how we can improve the show. That would be helpful. There you go. And Matt, and when, when we did the show... In two weeks, we'll be that much closer to a football, my friend. Oh, I can't wait. I know. Although, I don't even know why we play. I mean, the Saints are going to win the Super Bowl. Oh, my God. But we can play it out if y'all want to. It's just the only thing bad about the strike being over. Now, I, I, I have to hear about the Saints every show. All right. <laughs> All right, folks. Have a good one, and uh, we'll see you in a couple weeks.